friends, with the 31st December deadline fast approaching, this is the moment to review where you truly stand, to check whether the revised schedule M infrastructure upgrades have been completed as expected or whether important gaps still need immediate attention. Many pharma companies believe revised schedule M is about documents, SOPs, paperwork. Let me tell you very clearly, revised schedule M is not only a documentation upgrade, it's an infrastructure revolution. If your plant layout, HVAC, utilities, segregation, alarms and physical controls are weak, no SOP can save you anymore. I am Rajesh and in this video I will explain only the infrastructure changes, what was acceptable earlier and what is expected now in a very simple and a practical language. What has really changed? So friends, earlier Schedule M allowed a lot of flexibility. If your infrastructure was considered good enough and you had SOPs in place to manage the risks, regulators were largely satisfied. Many gaps were accepted if they were controlled through procedures, training or supervision. But now the thinker has completely changed. Under the revised Schedule M, infrastructure itself is expected to prevent errors, contaminations and mix-ups by the design. The facility layout, segregation, HVAC, utilities and alarms must inherently control the risks, not just react to them. SOPs are still very important, but their role has shifted. Earlier, SOPs compensated for infrastructure gaps. Today, SOPs support a strong infrastructure. They cannot replace it. In simple words, design is now primary. Procedures are secondary. Facility layout from space to science. Earlier, the schedule allowed a lot of flexibility. If your infrastructure was considered good enough and you had SOPs in place to manage the risks, Regulators were generally satisfied. The mindset was very operational. If something goes wrong, control it through the procedures. But that thinking has completely changed now. Today, regulators expect the infrastructure itself to prevent errors, not just control them after they happen. The facility design must naturally prevent contamination, mix-ups and human mistakes. SOPs still matter, but they are no longer the first line of defense. Now design is primary and SOPs are meant to support a well-designed facility not compensate for a weaker one. The unidirectional flow is no longer an option. Earlier, the unidirectional flow existed mostly in the textbooks and the training slides. On the shop floor, people moved back and forth as needed and SOPs were written to justify those movements. As long as activities were controlled on paper, this was generally accepted. But now with the revised Schedule M, that approach no longer works. Unit action flow is now expected to be physically built into the facility, not managed through procedures. If raw materials, in-process materials, finished goods and waste are moving through the same corridors, it immediately raises a red flag. Even as SOPs are strong, auditors now view this as a design weakness because the infrastructure itself could prevent mix-up and cross-contamination, not rely on human discipline alone. Segregation Procedural versus Physical Earlier, the segregation in pharmaceutical plants was largely managed through the procedures. We relied on time-based segregation, campaign manufacturing and detailed cleaning SOPs to justify the shared areas. As long as there was a logical explanation and some historical compliance, regulators were generally very comfortable. Now the regulators' preference is very clear and very firm. Physical segregation is always considered stronger than procedural segregation. The thinking today is very simple. If two activities can be separated physically, they should be separated physically. Curtains, floor marking, signboards and SOPs may still support segregation, but they are no longer strong justification on their own when permanent barriers like walls, partitions or dedicated rooms are feasible. In short, under Revised M, procedure supports segregation, but infrastructure proves it. High Risk Products – A Zero Tolerance Approach Earlier, segregation was often managed through the procedures. Time-based segregations, campaign manufacturing and detailed cleaning SOPs were widely accepted, especially when space was limited. If the company could demonstrate that cleaning was effective and operations were controlled, regulators were generally comfortable with this approach. Now the regulator's preference is very clear and very firm. Physical segregation is always superior to procedural segregation. The thinking has shift now. Can you manage the risk? to why didn't you eliminate the risk at the design level. Curtains, floor marking, warning boards and SOPs are no longer considered strong justifications when permanent physical barriers can be created. If walls, separate rooms or independent areas are feasible but are not implemented, 
it is viewed as a weakness in facility design, not just an operational choice. Weighing and dispensing, a big shift. Earlier schedule him allowed a lot of flexibility. If your infra was reasonably good and you had SOPs to manage the risks, regulators are mostly satisfied. Plants relied heavily on procedures. We control this through SOPs. We monitor through checks. We clean between the batches. Now the thinking has completely changed. Today, infra itself is expected to prevent errors, contaminations and mix-ups by design, not by explanation. SOPs are no longer the first line of control. They support the system, but design has now become primary. HVAC from being a utility to a GMP system. Earlier, the HVAC was treated almost like electricity, something that was necessary to run the plant, but really questioned in depth. As long as the rooms were comfortable and the system was running, it was considered acceptable. Today, the mindset has completely changed. Under the revised Schedule M, HVAC is no longer just a utility. It's a core GMP system. Its design, zoning, pressure cascade, filtration strategy, and airflow patterns directly determine whether your facility is compliant or not. In simple terms, HVAC now decides how contamination is controlled, how segregation is maintained, and how risks are prevented at the infrastructure level. And most importantly, a poorly designed HVAC system cannot be defined with SOPs anymore. If the air moves incorrectly, the compliance fails, regardless of how good the documentation looks. Area classification even for non-sterile. So friends, this is a major shift. Earlier, cleanliness levels were discussed mainly for sterile areas. Non-sterile areas were often treated as general manufacturing spaces. Now revised schedule M changes that thinking. Every non-sterile manufacturing areas are expected to have defined tennis levels, supported by HVAC design and zoning. The focus is not sterility, the focus is product protection, contamination control and consistency. In simple terms, even if a product is non-sterile, the environment around it can no longer be a casual one. Pressure differentials and visual controls Earlier, the pressure differentials were discussed mostly during the audits. But in many plants, they were not consistently implemented on the floor. As long as the procedures existed, this gap was often tolerated. Under revised schedule M, this approach has clearly changed. Pressure cascades are now expected as an inbuilt design feature, not an optional control. Most importantly, pressure differences should be visible and easily understood by the operators. If pressure is lost, it should be immediately apparent, not discovered later during an investigation. The message is very simple. If the system fails, the facility should warn you instantly, not wait for a paperwork to catch it. Temperature, RH and Alarms Manual temperature and RH checks are no longer enough. Earlier periodic readings were considered acceptable even if issues were noticed later. Now continuous monitoring with alarms is expected. The intent is clear. Deviations should be identified the moment they occur, not hours or days later. This ensures that the exclusions are detected immediately. So corrective action can begin before product quality is impacted, rather than discovering the problem only during review after the damage has already happened. Environmental Monitoring Infrastructure The revised approach pushes the industry towards real-time environmental awareness. Earlier conditions were often checked periodically and reviewed later. Now the expectation is to know what is happening in the area as it happens. Portable devices alone are not sufficient anymore because they depend on manual intervention. Fixed sensors provide consistency, reliability and immediate visibility of environmental conditions, helping prevent issues before they impact the product. Water systems, the design matters now. Earlier, as long as the water quality results were within the specification, the design of water system itself did not receive much attention. If the test reports were passing, most plants felt very, very comfortable. Now the focus has shifted significantly. Regulators are closely examining storage tank designs, loop configurations, slopes, drainability and the presence of dead lags. The reason is simple. Even if water meets specification today, a poorly designed system creates a constant risk of microbial growth and contamination tomorrow. And regulators are fully aware that design weaknesses eventually lead to quality failures. Which is why water system infrastructure is now under serious scrutiny. Location of utilities is now a GMP issue. Earlier, as long as water quality was meeting specifications, the design of water system itself was not receiving much attention. 
If the test results were acceptable, the system was generally considered compliant. Now the focus has clearly shifted. Storage tank design, distribution of the loop configuration, proper slope, drainability, elimination of dead legs are all closely examined. The reason is very simple. A poorly designed system may meet specifications today, but it can create a constant risk of contamination tomorrow. And the regulators are now very well aware that design's weaknesses eventually will lead to quality failures. Compressed air and gases. Now the compressed air is a direct product contact utility in many cases, especially during conveying, drying and equipment operations. Earlier, as long as the air was clean enough, systems were rarely questioned in depth. Now the expectation is very clear. Multi-stage filtration, proper moisture removal, oil control, point of use protection are considered essential parts of GMP infrastructure, not an optional upgrade. The reason is simple. Any contamination compressed air can directly reach the product and infrastructure must prevent that risk at the source itself. Equipment placement and cleanability. Equipment should not just fit into the room, it should fit hygienically. Today regulators look at whether equipment placement actually allows proper cleaning and inspection. If operators struggle to clean beneath, behind or around equipment, it's no longer seen as an operational issue. It's a design weakness built into the facility. Warehousing with physical status controls. Earlier, the warehouse segregation was often managed by labels and SOPs. Approved, rejected and quarantine metals were sometimes kept in same physical space, separated only by tags or by the registers. Now the expectation has clearly shifted. Physical segregation is preferred so that material state is controlled by design, not by human memory or discipline. The logic is simple. If a material is physically separated, the chance of mix-up is automatically reduced. If segregation exists only on paper, one small human error can lead to a serious GMP failure. Change rooms and gowning philosophy Personnel or the people working on the shop floor are considered the biggest contamination source. That's why the revised approach places much stronger emphasis on gowning concepts, air locks and hand-free fixtures. The focus is to reduce direct human contact, uncontrolled and movement and manual touch points so that contamination risks are controlled by design, not just by behavior or by the SOPs. Waste flow, now no more compromises. The waste should never travel through clean corridors. Earlier, this was often tolerated if procedures were in place and cleaning was done properly. If waste movement crosses production flow, it is now treated as a serious infrastructure lapse because waste flow is a design issue, not an SOP issue. Regulators now see this as a direct contamination risk that must be eliminated through layout and physical controls. Finishes, small details, but big impact. The ledges, joints and exposed fixtures may look like small details, but they easily trap dust, residues and microorganisms. Over time, these become hidden contamination sources that are difficult to clean effectively. Revised Schedulum therefore expects finishes that effectively support easy and thorough cleaning instead of creating obstacles for it. This is why epoxy flooring, coved wall floor junctions and flush mounted lights, panels and utilities are preferred now. They eliminate the dust traps and make routine cleaning genuinely effective, not just compliant on a piece of paper. Maintenance without entering the clean areas The maintenance should not disturb the GMP areas. Frequent maintenance activities can introduce dust, tools and people into clean spaces, increasing contamination risks. Revised Schedulum therefore encourages designs where maintenance can be performed without entering GMP areas, providing technical corridors, service shafts or external access to utilities and AHUs is now considered good GMP engineering practice as it protects clean areas while allowing efficient upkeep. Key message to the industry the revised schedule sends one very clear message to the industry. GMP starts with infrastructure. When a plant is well designed, compliance happens naturally through day-to-day -day operations. If the design is weak, no number of SOPs, trainings or explanations can fully compensate for it. That is why upgrades must be planned scientifically, executed in phases and supported by the right technical and GMP expertise, rather than rushed or handled as a cosmetic fix. So friends, if you found this video useful, share it with your QA, engineering and management teams. This is not just about compliance, this is about building facilities that can survive future inspections. 
सब्सक्राइब टू फार्मा हेल्थ इंसाइट्स फॉर प्रैक्टिकल जीएमपी गाइडेंस फ्रॉम द रियल इंडस्ट्री एक्सपीरियंस थैंक यू